This week, the head of the Texas foster care system admitted failing hundreds of kids, many of them living in state office buildings and hotels. The comments came in a hearing in front of a federal judge. It's the latest development in a decades-long lawsuit against the state over the treatment of children in the system. Investigator Avery Travis has been covering the escalating crisis for months and joins us with details. Avery? Yes, Judge Janice Jack actually took the arguments outside of the courtroom and instead is looking for help from the governor. She she told the Department of Family and Protective Services she is finished with fining and sanctioning them. Instead, she's calling on the most powerful elected official in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott, for his blessing as they try to come up with more urgent solutions. I always wanted to be a father. So when Jamal Edwards adopted a son, it felt like a dream come true. There were so many beautiful moments along the way, but then as he got older... His son was diagnosed with autism and other severe mental and behavioral health challenges with outbursts that often put Edwards and others in physical danger. Eventually, he made the difficult decision to enter into joint custody with the state, trying to get the right kind of care, hoping to put his son in some kind of residential treatment center. I was trying to save him from ending up in foster care, ending up in the care of a state department. And then that's where I end up anyway to ask for help. And even they would not help me. Suddenly, he got an email from state officials. He had just days to pick up his son and take him back into care full time, or the boy would have to sleep in a CPS office building. His son would have become one of more than 500 children who've had to sleep in hotels or offices this year. State officials pointing to more than 1,600 foster beds lost after treatment centers closed their doors, many due to the federal court's heightened monitoring. The judge scolded state officials for trying to shift blame onto the lawsuit, COVID, and even the kids themselves for the crisis, reminding them those facilities were closed because they were not safe. The DFPS commissioner still argued they've exhausted every option, but the court repeatedly blamed the state for not planning ahead. It's heartbreaking. Edwards says he eventually made the decision to move out of state, trying to find better care for his son. With all that I know and all that I can do and, and my advocacy, abilities, then what's happening to all these kids that don't have parents at all or have the parents that are neglectful or abusive? The DFPS commissioner says they do need to fill the gap between psychiatric hospitals and residential treatment centers to provide care for these high needs kids, most often teenagers. And Josh, the judge says she wants all of the parties in this case to sit down together to come up with a more workable solution and specifically directed the state's attorneys to get the governor's blessing. Now, Avery, this is separate from the ongoing state case against the Texas foster care system in Travis County. Where does that one stand? Yes, earlier this month, a district court judge actually called on DFPS to create a task force. Judge Aurora Martinez Jones fined those officials for placing children in offices and hotels to sleep instead of in licensed homes. Now, the judge wants the money from those fines to instead start that task force right here in Central Texas. The deadline to have that task force up and running is by the end of the month. All right, Avery, we'll keep following this. Thank you very much. Texas avoids the worst damage from Hurricane Nicholas, but what about the next storm? It would bring 25 feet of water up into Galveston Bay and into the Houston Ship Channel. The new plans for a decades-long project to protect the coast, why the price tag could keep the final version from providing the protection Texans need. And later, what would you do if your doctor suddenly shut their office down? It's happening to some Texas patients. We'll look at the rules physicians are supposed to follow.